that's pretty good right there bro yeah, being yeah, self-aware like... is huge in this industry and it's like if you're not man you're just gonna burn through your account you know like you're gonna burn through yeah. everything if you can't realize in the moment i'm doing something wrong right now mm -hmm. i need to stop this and make an adjustment All right, welcome to SimCast number 19. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've got my pal James. Uh, goes by JMF Tattoo, right? On yep. uh, on Twitter. Yep. That's James me. and I. Yeah, awesome, man. Glad to have you on the show. And uh, just to give you guys a little bit of background, uh, James has a um, he, he's got a background in coding, and we're going to learn more about that today. Um, but I am a huge fan, and many of you are obviously huge fans of VWAP Boulevard, and James is kind of like the brainchild behind creating the, um, the Pine script for TradingView, uh, Thinkorswim, that sort of stuff. So we've, uh, I've been using his indicator from TradingView for a while now, and I'll be honest with you, it's like, I mean, it's, it's almost like a cheat code, James, like I, uh, it, <laughs> yeah. it's really, yeah, it's really amazing. Um, so anyway, you know, we'll, we'll get into all of that, man, but I just want to welcome you to the show and thanks, uh, thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, I was stoked when you asked me, you know, across Twitter to, to hop on here and I'm excited to share some stuff about VWAP and, uh, and Boulevard. It's, it's my whole entire system, basically, you know, that, and, uh, you know, uh, long dated event based VWAPs. Uh, I'm a student of Zach Erwitz, and he is, uh, he's been trading for 14, 15 years now, uh, full time. He owns the VWAP.com. Uh, he is the VWAP guy, you know. Uh, yeah. he, he's had some episodes on chat with traders and stuff like that. So I, I'm a student of his, and I was all focused around VWAP. Uh, and I brought to him the idea of Boulevard through all day faders on Twitter, right? A, a lot of the people that watch the show are going to know who that is, right? Uh, he's an avid, uh, he trades all markets, but he, you know, Boulevard is, uh, comes from the small cap market. Mm -hmm. And so I took that idea and I brought it to Zach and I said, Hey, there's this idea everybody keeps talking about on Twitter, um, you know, the highest volume view app and, and I haven't seen it on any platforms. Could we go back and ID that highest volume day and plot a view app from there? And he was like, yeah, shouldn't be any problem. So we've got into it. And uh, I had a couple little mock-up codes from him and, and all credit to my mentor. Like I wouldn't know coding at all. I wouldn't, I started on ThinkScript with Toss mm -hmm. and then I migrated towards Pine and TradingView and I've made the full leap over to TradingView now. And, uh, you know, he taught me uh, think script. So I had a basic understanding of coding. And once we had that set in TOS, I, I was running with it, you know, and I took, I took kind of the, the formula to find it, right? And uh, moved that over to Pine and paired with a coder from Australia. His name is Rumpy. <laughs> Rumpy Pumpy Dumpy is his name on TradingView. He's got some amazing tools as well. And when we were kind of stuck with TradingView, because I was brand new to Pine, I didn't, I didn't know from my head from my foot, but uh, he helped us work out the, the core logic of it. And we then took that and expounded upon that and made Boulevard and Zach released his version, which is available through the viewapp.com. And, and there's a full rundown of how we interact with it and play with it. And then I took the formula and I went this way with it <laughs> and did my own <laughs> thing with it, you know? Um, but it's all steeped in the knowledge of, of what we trade and how we trade at the view app. And, and I use it intraday. I use it on broad time frames, on small time frames, and, and like you said, yeah, it is, it is kind of a cheat code, you know? Um, that's cool, I, man. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Well, I mean, you guys have like, I mean, you're actually a moderator in, yep. in his chat room. Right. And so yep. like yep. all your plays, whether you're, you're looking at the spy or you're looking at, um, you know, some kind of like sm small float, something like that. Like you're basically all your strategies are centered around VWAP then. Is that Everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everything centered around VWAP uh in the room uh, whether it's you know intraday vwap it's uh vwap from a major swing high it's a highest volume vwap uh okay. what we call auto vwap which is a, a range finder and it goes through and finds three specified ranges of of swing high swing lows um 
deviations and yeah yeah we so we have four main trade types that are based around intraday view apps standard deviations right we play with two standard deviations uh and we've got a trade type one two three and four mm -hmm. and we look for that move from uh the transition zone from a counter trend market or, or a range bound market and that breakout scenario whether it be up or down into a trending market right we okay. use what's called what we call the fast lane which is between plus one and plus two standard deviations uh, cool. And we look to take trades off of those deviation bands, and that's based around intraday, right? But mm -hmm. you can apply that to longer time frames. And the thing that it, all I, I always tell people, my trading is based around three things. It's based around volume, average price, and extension. Okay. I want to know where the volume is located. I want to know what that main participant's average price is. And I want to know how far can I expect this to extend, mm -hmm. right? And if we're up you know, I know we're not, we don't live in a bell curve, normally distributed market, but if we kind of take that theory and apply it to it and the dynamic nature of VWAP's deviations, and we know through the bell curve theory that 95% of price stays within two standard deviations, well, we can take a pretty high probability trade around those deviations, knowing that either A, we'll get a reversion or B, we'll get a continuation, you know, so we take that kind of, we take the deviations and we've found edges in our four trade types that we that we work around each day so that's pretty sick man like you know and that's something that i've noticed just playing around with the vwap boulevard tool that you guys created is that it does seem to give you you know for all intents and purposes if you know what you're looking for like context wise um obviously not ignoring like volume and price action but mm -hmm. Seems like those levels get, do give you that edge of having, say, like a, a definable risk yeah. when you enter. And then, like you were saying, like looking for like how far can it go, you know? Yeah. So knowing what those those standard deviations are, finding your next levels and like having a target, like yeah. easily, easily attainable target. So I overlay, I overlay intraday and boulevard, right? Um and the reason being, think of it as a road trip, right? And you maybe you're you're starting off at the lowest, highest volume view app. <laughs> so what we call V3, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in just the basic boulevard, there's three view apps. There's highest, mid, lowest, lowest, highest. Would that be like your S1, S2, S3? Exactly, yeah, okay. exactly, yeah. Gotcha. Um, so if that's a range, say that's a $2 range between the third highest and the highest, and you're starting off down here at the lowest, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if that's a two or three or $4 range, you're going to have movement in and out of that range. And I use intraday with its deviations then to guide the volatility through that road trip up to my final destination being Boulevard, right? The highest volume view app or right. vice versa. If you're short, you know, you're taking that entry against Boulevard to the downside, you're still using those deviations to guide yourself down in the fast lane or in that negative one between that view app and the negative one deviation. Yeah, you can use those in the middle of the trade to know, okay, am I trending? Am I moving like I'm supposed to every time we pop up are pops being sold, right? Mm -hmm. Or are you know, you hear traders say, uh, shorts, you, know, you want to participate on that confirmed lower high, and when dip buyers become pop sellers, right? right? So are they continuing to sell that pop on the way down in the fast lane and we're rejecting at negative one all the way down on mm -hmm. our way to that other boulevard? So you use them in in, in confluence really and, and paired together and you've got like, man, in some other extension tools that I use, we have like razor sharp entries and it's, yeah. it's fun, yeah, so. That's pretty cool, man. Well, you know, like let, let's in, in just a moment, I'd like to kind of dive into uh, some charts. I always think that's the best way to like see this, you know, visually, but yeah. Talk to us, uh, you know, give us just a little bit about your background. You know, how did you get started in trading? When did you get started? So uh, I'm a tattooer, <laughs> hence the name JMF tattoo, right? Uh, yeah. I'll be 40 this year and I've got a 10 year old son and uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know how to put it. I was a partier for a long time. And yeah. before my son was born, I would just blow all my money. You know what I mean? I didn't really have any, what are you going to do? I was a tattooer living in Vegas, you know, right. uh, <laughs> all my thirties and into my early twenties. So, um, 
after my son was born, um, life changed, right? And yeah. I started realizing, well, huh, uh, tattooing is great, and, and I make good money, but I haven't put any money away uh, for right. myself. So how can I start to change that? My dad's always been into investing. He's, you know, your Buffett style hold and never look at it again <laughs> until right. you until you retire. Um, and I didn't want to do that. So I started to look into trading. Uh, I didn't know anything, you know, like three and a half years ago. And, and I dove in and I found Zach and I just went head deep into VWAP stuff. Um, and then COVID hit and I was at right when COVID hit, I was starting to kind of turn the curve and be like, okay, I'm starting to make a little bit of money now. I'm starting mm -hmm. to kind of become profitable. I'm a normal guy, just like everybody out there that is trading that starts off yeah. with less than 25 grand. You know what I mean? I started off with like a little under $5,000, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I've built that since, you know, I'm not in a major account now. I still trade a cash account because I don't trust myself with margin. I'm above cool. PDT now, but I don't want that, you know, and yeah, I, if I want that leverage, uh, I've implemented gamma and options market stuff into my trading in the last like six months. And that's given me kind of that leverage play if I want that, you know, okay. so um, consistently profitable now for almost about two years. Uh, and, and COVID really gave me that kind of shove. Now Good I'm not you, tattooing. Man. I'm home. My son's home from school. I had all that time to just go eyeballs deep. You know what I mean? So I haven't been trading a ton of time, right? But I feel like the mentor that I have and the questions that I asked early on uh, were really the key to becoming consistently profitable faster, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and and I'm not a moderator in the fact, in, the, in, in his room in the sense of like, I'm your guru or I'm going to teach right. you how to trade, right? I'm just there to get the conversation going each day. Uh, Zach and I have formed a close relationship as friends, and I was working for a different trading company before that, uh, moderating a penny room, a penny stock room, and he, you know, I'm on the phone with this guy all day, every day, we're, we're doing Boulevard together, we're making other codes together, and he finally just goes, how much do they pay you? <laughs> I go, well, they pay me this. He goes, oh, no, you're coming to my room. And I go, okay, you know, okay, cool. Like, <laughs> that's what I've been wanting you to ask me forever, you know, and he finally, and, and it all just fell into place. So awesome. uh, January, um, I, I started working daily in his room now, and, and I'm on, on the air every day at 5 a.m. my time. I'm West Coast, so it's okay. early mornings, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and I'm on, uh, we do a morning broadcast from like, uh, you know, uh, nine o'clock to around 11 11 30 okay. and then i usually go on lunch and then come back for a quick uh like lunch time is there anything squeezing you know is there anything going on and if there's not then i'll usually kick back uh work on some projects and then i get on usually for the last hour oh, um congrats, so yeah man. i just yeah. i'm super humbled and like i feel very grateful that zach is a seasoned trader who's been trading you know 13 14 mm -hmm. years um, he works with, he's a consultant for very large sized traders. You know what I mean? Like he helps a yeah. lot of people. He's talked, he's talked to thousands of traders. He's a coach as well. Um, so I just, I felt very humbled and, and, and grateful that him and his business partner, Jeff would give me the opportunity to be the voice of the view app in the room day to day, you know? Well, so I can see why, I mean, you're, you're very articulate. Um, seems Thank like you. you're very detailed, <laughs> detail oriented. Uh, so congrats, yeah. not only on, you know, finding uh, consistency with your trading, but also, you know, landing a gig in the industry. So that kind of yeah. you know, allows you to do that. What yeah. I'd like I still to you as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> hundred oh, percent, man. Well, yeah. let me, let me ask you this, like just learning from Zach and those guys, like what's the, um, you know, maybe if you could take like just the, the highest level top, you know, two or three things that you've learned as, you know, a growing trader the past three to four years, you know, that you, you might could pass on to somebody. What, what, what are some of the biggest things you've, you've taken away from those guys? God, relax. <laughs> okay. Relax. Um, the top three things that I've learned from him, man, that's a, you put me on the spot here. That's a tough one. Um, well, re relax sounds like one of them. I mean, that, that's yeah. definitely a good one. 
you know, uh, obvi- I, I, I hate to say the cliche stuff, you know what I mean? But uh, obviously risk management, right? Everybody says mm-hmm. that, but um, relax and know that it's always going to go f- it's going to go a little further than you think. And it's going to pull a little further than you think. Like he's been huge on me. Uh, I was, when I came to him, I was like, I've got these 15 second charts and I'm scalping, you know, like yeah. seven cents here and there. And he was like, bro, <laughs> so let's get you like, let's, let's start to work you into working around a core position and being able to, to build on that and build okay. on the trend that's working. Um, not to sit there and you know he's not a small cap trader at all i took yeah. his whole large cap philosophy and i applied it to small caps and 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 i he taught me to uh, here's the thing he taught me to know what i do best mm-hmm. right which uh i'm a small time frame scalper right and then how to find my edge and find the best criteria Right. Okay. I have a very cool. specific criteria of stock and scenarios that I look for um, based off of the tools that I use. Mm-hmm. And he taught me how to formulate a plan around that and then how to execute those four, one of those four trade types in and around that plan each day and know how to uh, sit on my hands if there's yeah. nothing going on. And that's still tough. I'm a young trader still. There's still days when I have a hard time doing that, you know, yeah. but I think we we all. 30 years or three years. I think everybody has an issue with that at one point. So um, he taught me how to, to, to build a plan and to just relax and let the plan come to me. So that's cool, man. And it also sounds like, um, you know, you go from being a lot more like micro focused uh, to, you know, maybe like bigger picture oriented for yeah. your trade. So yeah. maybe were you like one of those like one shot, one kill kind of guys and then I'll, or I'll cut it. And now you've become more like you were saying, yeah. like, like scale into a position. Yeah, you know? I was, uh, I was definitely like in and out one, you know, one in one out. Um, I was literally trading a 15 second chart, uh, <laughs> which was like a heart attack in a chart basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he taught me how to build around a core position and, and, and look much more towards an intraday swing style uh, if 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 you want to call it that right uh yeah. where you're building into a position early morning on that mm-hmm. morning panic right and then you're starting to see what the tape and the level two has to say i'm a book map user too okay so i implement that as well and that's a i mean we've got vwap with standard deviations in book map so i i don't even need a real chart i can literally execute everything on there but I do the real charts for uh, the room and for the other tools that I've built, right? We don't have Boulevard and Bookmap, but right. um, uh, I, I, yeah. So uh, awesome. I, I've learned to look at the bigger picture now and to find that major liquidity, you know, and then yeah. just, you know, know that price gravitates towards liquidity, <laughs> you know, and try to get in on the bottom and ride it to the top. I'm, I'm predominantly a long base trader. Uh, mm-hmm. that comes from being in a cash, starting in a cash account and, uh, not wanting to take on the risk of, and the responsibility really of margin. And I, and I continue to stay in a short, uh, a cash account. And if I have short views, uh, I, I really try to stay away from small caps where everybody says the short is the edge. Uh, I try to express my short views through put, uh, okay put options, right? And different types of gamma strategies in the larger, more liquid, uh, you know, top five names, you know, at your Apple's Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google. So Awesome. Would you consider yourself like um, a back tester kind of guy? Or are you just more of like, um, mm. you know, screen time, trade, yeah. more trades? Uh, do you do any yeah. kind of outcome testing or, or trade review or anything like that? Uh, so I'm not a big back tester. No. Uh, and uh, no, uh, okay. put it, that, put it that, you know, that simply I I'm not, uh, yeah. I don't know Python and I feel like if you're going to run any type of reputable or credible back or forward test that, you know, uh, you need to know one of the big boy languages and you need to mm-hmm. be able to run a real solid in sample out of sample test. Mm-hmm. And I just don't have those skills yet. So, uh, I haven't, you know, you can run back test on trading view and, 
and sure. uh, in, and trade ideas and stuff like that. And they're going to help a little bit. You know, they're going to give you a rough idea um, or just manual data analysis through Excel or, you know, stuff like that. Of course, I've done them. But I would say the edge that I've gotten out of those versus just screen time and, and logging what I'm seeing on screen, mm -hmm. uh, I get more out of it spending the time on the screen time. And I, I've got my own private Discord for just me. No yeah. one else is in it. I keep all my notes in there. All my playbooks are in there. Everything's screenshot. Everything's notated. Nice. You know what I mean? So that's my like Bible. You know, I, I go back to that whenever I have a, uh, a problem and then keeping it within like the kind of four trade types, I'm sorry, keeping it within the four trade types that we talk about in the view app. I know that there's proven edge there because Zach's been trading those for 13, 14 years. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, yeah. No, that's cool, man. You're like the second guy I've heard that has um, discord as, as kind of like the, the journal, the journal, which is, yeah. I, I, I may need to start doing that. I mean, I'm obviously I'm in Dude, discord, it's so but great. Yeah. Well, I'm using OneNote. I use OneNote a lot, but you know, I, I think it, it just kind of condenses everything because I'm in Discord right. anyway. All you got to do is just, yeah. I guess, jump over to your channel, right? Yeah. It's just one, I, it's one icon above the VWAP yeah. in, my, in my Discord. And I just literally click between the two of them each day. Um, mm -hmm. I used Evernote for a while and I liked it a lot, but it was just, it's so subdivided. And I, mean, I would honestly get lost in there. I'm, yeah. I'd be like, okay, where did I put that? Okay, put it over here. And if I didn't tag it, oh, God forbid, I didn't tag something, and I wouldn't be able to find it. Or you know, it was just, yeah, just a pain. And I'm literally, I'm in Discord, whether on my PC or on my phone, mm -hmm. all day, every day, you know, answering questions or just dealing with a room. So it's like, just that's the easiest way, you know. And you can uh, yeah. keep everything. Just everything's a channel. Every playbook. You know, and I've got I've got a journal channel, I've got my playbook channels, and then I've got just a general notes. I've got um, uh, a dilution channel. You know, like mm -hmm. it's whatever you want to put it. You know, put it in there. You put it in there. So, no, it makes sense, man. I, I think maybe this is the. Um, I, I think you you've got me encouraged to do it. So I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do that on my own. Being well, an artist for 20 years, dude. I'm such a visual person. Like, if I try to write or take notes for more than a paragraph, I get lost. I'm just like, okay, I don't even know what I'm reading, you know, but if I can look yeah. at a picture where I've notated it on trading view and trading view makes it so easy. I'm like instantly burned into my brain. Like, Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Like I get that. Okay. I won't do that again. You know, like, so it's easier for me. No, I think that makes a whole lot of sense, man, because, you know, I hadn't thought about that, but you, you hear about in psychology, like the artistic people versus like the engineers, you know, like, like, I'm percent. totally, I'm not an engineer. <laughs> like, no, yeah. You know, like, um, and, and I guess you could say I'm somewhat artistic, but like, I probably fall somewhere like in the middle there, maybe slightly more on the artistic side, but yeah, I'm like you, man. Like I, I have a hard time like running spreadsheets. Like I'll be yeah. honest with you. Like I hate spreadsheets. You Me know? too. <laughs> I hate them. Yeah. I mean, like, I hope my, my boss doesn't watch this, you know, because, because you know, but I, I just don't like spreadsheets. Like I hate it. Yeah. I hate, I hate all that kind of stuff. I'm very visual. Um, would you say like from, you know, the type of personality that you have, like how important is personality to trading? Because for me, I have to feel something like yeah. I'm that way about everything. Like, yeah. I got to feel good about buying a house. I got to feel yeah. good about, you know, going out with somebody like there's got to be a really good feeling. And like, if I'm going to take this trade, I got to have a good feeling about it. You know, yeah. does that make sense? Like for a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I think you, there's so many traders that are not self-aware, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They don't know a, what they're good at, B what they're bad at or when they're doing something wrong or when they're doing something right. They just don't know. They don't have any spatial awareness about their own mental capabilities. You know what I mean? I think a lot of that, um, I'm not going to get too private, but uh, I, I've been sober now for like, since my son was born, basically, uh, up, like man. six months after my son was born, I, uh, <laughs> uh, I had a run in with the law and I got sober. So um, congrats, brother. I thank you. Sharing. I appreciate it. But through that journey, it's it's taught me a lot about my mental awareness, right? And how do I feel today? Where am I at? Am I in a good place? Am I in a bad place? How am I going to work through this? 
and I'm very self-aware of what I'm good at, right? And I'm very self-aware of what clicks with me and what doesn't. And it's like, and I look back to like my high school, I didn't go to college. I dropped out when I was 17 of high school, went straight into a tattoo shop and started tattooing. Like I, that was me. Um, but I always knew when I would try something, when I was good at it, right? And I would instantly throw away anything I was bad at and I would just eyeballs deep in everything I was good at. And I ended up like everything I've ever tried, I've, I've always excelled at, but then I kind of dropped to the wayside. Trading and jujitsu is the only thing I've ever, the two things that I've stuck with and that I'm like, okay, I get this. You know what I mean? And so I just through like the sober journey, been doing jujitsu since 2007. Like you get to learn a lot about yourself and your quirks and mm -hmm what makes you tick, right? So I've hacked into that visually on my charts where Zach is totally the opposite. He is a absolute like minimalist. And yeah. not that I'm piling 10 pounds in a five pound bag on my chart, but it's like, I've color coded, I've set everything up in a very specific way, being an artist for 20 years. I know exactly when something triggers on my chart, what that means, yeah. you know what I mean? And then, you know, the, the type of notation that I do for myself, I just, I, I know what I'm talking about when I shorthand something, I don't I need to write some detailed paragraph with 22 spreadsheet examples behind it. I know exactly what I'm talking about right then, you know? So uh, yeah, just like, I think knowing yourself and how do I even put it? No, you, I don't know, knowing that's, yourself, you that's, know what I mean? That's, Just being that's pretty good right there, bro. Yeah, being yeah, self-aware like... is huge in this industry. And it's like, if you're not, man, you're just going to burn through your account. You know, like you're going to burn through yeah. everything. If you can't realize in the moment, I'm doing something wrong right now. Mm -hmm. I need to stop this and make an adjustment, you know, so. No, that's great stuff, man. That's really good stuff. And, you know, and to that point, what would you say, I mean, thinking back on your career thus far in trading, like what's, you know, have you had to overcome some adversity? Like maybe. Yeah, for maybe sure. I almost blew up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, was I haven't it like, blown up, but I almost did. Was it that self-awareness stage, you know, because obviously like you don't just like know exactly what you, yeah. what kind of trader you are, how, you know, what, right. what your style is like, it takes a little bit of time. Like what have you had to yeah. overcome in the past three or four years? Uh, it just, you know, touch the hot stove, you know, type thing. I had, to, I had to screw up and get my account, you know, literally, uh, you know, within like a thousand dollars of blown up and then work okay. my way back up and then make a little bit more money and put it in there and, you know, redeposit a little bit here and then build myself back up from there. But um, I am not in the program or anything. I don't even want to make this a talk about sober, but like I'm an addict. Yeah. I know I am, you know what I mean? And so everybody likes trading. It's fun when you win money. Mm -hmm. And so you always want to go for that next big run. And I just had to very quickly realize that, uh, you know, uh, and obviously having a mentor helps. Like he was like, dude, you're going to lose your account, you know, mm -hmm. and you need to buckle down uh, and you need to understand that your risk percent is your risk percent and you need to stick to that. If you okay. don't, you're not going to have X amount of time. You're not, you're not, you're not going to have as many times at bat. You're just not, you know what I mean? And it, next thing you know, you're going to hit that third strike. You're going to be out. Mm. What are you going to do then? You know, you did, you got, more money to put in because you're going to have to, you know, so yeah. he's, uh, you know, he's much more eloquent speaking than I am, but uh, he, you know, I think having a mentor helped a ton. Uh, okay. Being a tattoo artist, you can't start, I mean, you shouldn't start tattooing unless you go through what we call a formal apprenticeship, just like a plumber or an electrician or something like that. Um, coming from that industry, I was aware when I first started trading that I was not going to be able to jump into this head first and think that I'm going to swim with the big dogs and be able to make it. Mm -hmm. I knew that I needed to seek help and seek instruction from a credible source that I, that I knew in my gut. Like you said, when you feel something, I had to find someone or a community that clicked with me that I knew wasn't BS, that yeah. wasn't going to try to front run me and bag me. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I tried them all, dude. I tried every room out there. I, in the first like six months, I did trials or signed up for any of the major ones that you can think of. 
and I finally landed on, you know, our community through happens through chance on YouTube mm-hmm. and a, and a, and a pod a podcast that I was listening to. And I was like, I heard him talking. I'm like, this dude is it. This guy makes sense to me. I understand what he's saying. I understand what he's talking about when he's talking about volume and average price and the cumulative nature of it and all that, like all of that made sense. And so when I got there, it was very structured, which I need. Um, I crave like, I crave rigidity and continuity and certainty all the time. I need (laughs) every morning to be the same. You know what I mean? And it's such like a repeat morning. It's like Groundhog's Day every day. That's when I trade the best. When I get thrown off or something else happens, like I'm, I'm a deer in the headlights. I'm just, oh crap, what do I do? You know? Um, So it was definitely discipline in the beginning. And I think the community, uh, you know, there's a couple guys that are in the room that were key and integral in helping me formulate that risk plan Mm -hmm. that so many traders don't even know exist. You know what I mean? They're like, okay, like one guy literally sat with me on the phone and explained to me, this is what a risk percent of your total capital means. Cause I didn't even know, like the first six months I was like, what are you talking about risk percent? I'm like, I don't know. I lost a hundred bucks. You know what I mean? They're like, uh, you know, so they went through and literally laid it out in the beginning. Um, so do, you, me, so do you think that has structured you then? Because I know we, and we, we, it's, it's kind of funny how, like, it seems like we've had this theme of, of risk management, position sizing in, in some of the previous podcasts I've done in the past month. And, and one of those or a couple of them, we were talking a lot about like the Kelly criteria yeah. and yeah, you may be familiar with that, but mm-hmm. like, are you, would you say, are you risking like, like 1% of your account on every trade or like a half a percent or like, how, yeah. do, you, how do you typically manage that? I go with a vanilla 2% um, okay. cause I don't have a huge account, you know what I mean? So I can afford to risk a little bit more. Um, I, or at least I feel like it. Right. Um, I'm sure there's some quant out there, some spreadsheet guy that's going to tell me I'm wrong. You know what I mean? But I've been consistently growing it. So it's working. Um, and so yeah, I don't want to give it a little room then to work. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm a su- uh, support dip buyer right but i'm not going to buy support in the middle of the day in the middle of a trend i'm not going to buy that uh, you know what, what's the basic like uh, you know 90 may pull back on a five minute chart or whatever i'm looking for that major liquidity support uh, support the floor you mm-hmm. know um you, that there's like i trade the matrix that's on twitter all the time mm-hmm. he talks about the floor breach i'm looking to find their floor gotcha. early right and get in off of that floor and see if i can build a you know and this is kind of small cap-esque talk right now um find that floor and then work that range back and forth if it's a high day clear out type scenario then i'm trying to scale the pops as they go up to build that micro shelf scale into that micro shelf and well i'm sorry scale into that first pop near vwap and then as they extend up into the micro shelf i'm taking profits into that you know and then usually leave uh, a third on down around the base so I can start to restructure in and out of that core. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would even call it a core if you're only leaving a third on, but into that original average price. Right. Yeah. Um, So that's kind of like my small cap mentality. Um, And my risk percent or my share size is, is determined by my entry minus my stop divided by my risk percent gives me my share size, et cetera. Um, I couldn't so, talk you into like maybe walking us through an image of a, a trade, would you? Could I? No, yeah, I think so. Yeah, give me. Cool. So Great. what what I look to do is I look to participate uh, in and around high volume zones, right? Or uh, reversion style trades, uh, something like that. Uh, so when I'm looking at a trade, we have four main trade types that we take in uh, in the VWAP, right? And something like this on Ford, where we, you know, Ford was on a good run for a couple of days, or for mm-hmm. a couple of days, a couple of weeks. Uh, and something like this, where we've got a big gap down, that gap down reversal type reversion trade back up, possibly a gap fill. You know what okay. I mean? I'm looking to participate down here off the lows on the macro level, intraday on a micro time frame. So something like this. Uh, We've got a few different trade types that are playing out here. We've got what's called a T1, 2, 3, and 4. Mm-hmm. Um, T1 and 2 are trend style trades, right? That means your market has a directional bias, and we're starting to head that way with a rising 
VWAP, meaning that the average price is dragging, being drug up by the buyers who are buying the dips higher and higher and higher, right? Mm -hmm. um, so something like this Ford, uh, I specifically have, you know, it's the most basic pattern, right? But it's an A, B, C, D, right? Or well, yeah. how I do it, right? A, B, C, extension up, flag back, look for the support at plus two deviation. This is what we call a T2 long. Okay. Uh, so something like this, I would participate off of plus one deviation for the trend play up for the gap fill. Um, specifically looking at this day as well, uh, I've got long dated 180 day four hour uh, standard deviation channels on my right chart uh, that I keep on at all times. And these are kind of my guide for the big picture. Uh, and I look to move in and out of those levels with Boulevard. Nice. There we go. Boulevard's on there now. Uh, let me move this up again. And like I said, everything's based around volume. Um, I've got my profile on here with, you can barely see it right now. Let me uh, bump see. that saturation a little bit. Can you see it? The little yeah, zone I can, shooting I can see off it. of it? Like yeah, it's like a, what do you call that? Yeah, like magenta, magenta, red. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, Let me bump go. the saturation just a little bit here and you'll be able to see uh, the zones that this projects. So this volume profile goes through and hunts for whatever the user's uh, time frame, right? Do we want to choose a day? Do we want to choose a week, a month, et cetera? Goes okay. through and looks for the highest volume candle and then projects a high volume node off of that highest volume candle. So all of that to be said, as we move down on Ford, we've got a high volume zone off of 1730 mm -hmm. that we're looking to take the reversion off of for the bounce back up. So a play like this, basically, you know, we could take this high volume node right here that's coming off of negative one deviation. And we could look to participate in the move up and out of that and move over negative one deviation on the channel intraday on a micro time frame. Uh, that box that I just drew now is transferred to our intraday channel or intraday chart. Yep. And we can see that the T2 is basically the market going up and checking, are there sellers here? And if there are, right, we'll sell it back down to the low end, value low, right? Uh, in auction market theory, value high, value low. Um, but the buyers hold support right there at plus one for the T2 long. So as we come back and recheck that plus one deviation, uh, I'm getting long off the hold of that with a limit, right? Okay. And usually uh, in something like this, if there's a previous swing low right there, some type of structure, you can risk that. But I'm usually looking to risk the zones, right? So I'm, gonna, uh, I'm going to equate my share size to the zone that I'm working with, right? So if my risk is 2%, uh, you know, uh, 17, you know, well, what would your entry be right there? 1742. I'm going to risk just below the low of that volume zone. And it okay. tends, it works right here because the zone is within reasonable range, right? If the volume zone's a dollar down, obviously you're not going to risk that. But your entry level minus your stop divided by your risk percent or times your risk percent gives you your share, uh, share size, right? And I've got uh, a little share calculator over here that just does it for me. Right. Okay. Cool. So, you know, if you're 1750 and your stop would be 1733, you can take up to 3,000 shares without risking your 2%, you know. Okay. That's pretty cool. 2% uh, overall capital. Right. So, in in my you know uh, overall capital if i was to get stopped out below here i would only lose two percent of my overall capital i've got a max law i've got a three strike you're out rule so if i okay. take three two percent losses in a day i'm done i cannot trade anymore and i can't take any more than five in a week or else i'm done for the week so that may seem like a lot but i don't have a huge account right so i can i I risk a little bit more to, to try to win a little bit more. And I'm looking for that favorable, favorable risk to reward scenario. So right here, you know, for risking, uh, you know, on the, on the deviation right here, 1742 to, you know, basically nine cents. Right. And we're looking to get this gap fill right there. 
well, you're risking nine down and you're looking to make, you know, 50 up. So right. four, four R basically, you know, um, and we're basing all of that off the macro four hour daily, weekly, monthly volume zones that get projected and uh, the long-term standard deviations over here. Now that is yeah. not Zach's methodology, but I've intertwined that into mine and we use Boulevard in there as well. So right here, 1763, we're dealing with the breakover and kind of as we're coming down to the continuous boulevard level here that's launched off of a high volume day back here, we're, we're betting that the buyers that launched this highest volume VWAP, that this is now their average price yeah. because they've sized in and they're going to defend that boulevard continuous level, right? That continuous boulevard level. So we're, we're kind of banking on that, right? And we're risking their volume zone essentially. Does that That's make amazing. sense? Yeah. No, I mean, this, this is, it's, it's a thing of beauty. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, um, that's yeah. why I was saying in the beginning, like, it's almost like a cheat code, you know, like it is really, yeah. It gives you such detailed insight into who the, I guess, if you're, if you're a white coffee and like who the composite operator is, like, who's yeah. the, you know, where are those guys who, you know, where are the whales? Where are the guys with yeah. the money? And where are yeah. they going to start supporting their positions? And yeah. so I just think it's amazing how you've created this this indicator to show that. Now I I'm kind of one of those minimalistic guys. Like I've got maybe a few moving averages and then just my like static VWAP Boulevard lines. But right. like this, this is the kind of stuff that's like it just helps you build that bigger picture trade so that then when you go in on the intraday, like you did on the left hand side here. Number one, what I notice here is that you're coupling all of your like bigger picture data driven uh, VWAP levels with a proper setup. Like you just said, it's the ABCD setup, you know, it's yeah. um, a, like a volatility contraction pattern where you got yeah. a big run up and then it pulls back. You get your little higher lows, yeah. volatility contracts right there. So, yeah. you know, yeah. for, for me in my style, I typically take the like the like the C area of the trade. I'm, I'm more right. of an anticipatory kind of guy, but it looks like you look for the breakout and then yeah. find, you, you want that retest. Is that? So I'm, right? I'm showing that just to kind of shine a light on the T2 long right there, which is the trend trade in the fast lane right here that we talk about, but I'm a C guy as well. <laughs> okay. So I will buy the C of ABCD all the time. Yeah. I'm gra I'm putting a limit down there just under VWAP to get that, that sell candle wick. And yeah. as soon as it wicks back up, I'm in, at, I'm in profit. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I'm, I'm trying to get long. And that is so hard for a lot of people to do, but it's just a, it's a repetition and seeing how well Boulevard works in all aspects uh, when paired with, a, you know, a, a different level or uh, another VWAP or a volume zone, et cetera. I trust my levels. I trust my levels yeah. enough to put a limit down there and to properly buy the dip not by the breakout of the breakout of the breakout of the dip. You know what I mean? Like exactly. I, when I first started, um, I, I, when I first started, I followed a lot of YouTube guys, mm -hmm. you know, just like a lot of people do. Um, mm -hmm. And I got dumped on so many times and I just got so sick of buying a breakout and then immediately wicking back on me and just being like, oh my God, I got to stop out of this. You know, like yeah. that, I just started racking my brain and racking my brain and racking my brain. How can I buy the dip properly, effectively at an area of support that I trust that I know that the, that isn't just an objective me putting a line on a chart. That is why everything that you see on my chart is auto plotted through the mathematical calculation in the code. Yeah. Nothing is uh, objective uh, discretionary level by me. Cause I don't trust myself. I'm not that smart. You know what I mean? Like I want the math to show me, Hey dude, right here. And it literally shows you right here. Hey buddy, there's 130 million shares right here. 130, yeah. 908,672 yeah. at $17. So I want to be buying on top of those 130 million shares that I hope they're going to defend, you know? Um, so before I was, you know, a trend line here, a trend line there, 22 trend lines over here, uh, what a Fibonacci, maybe two or three view apps, and I would so much crap. And now everything is based around volume, 
average price and extension. And I just keep drilling that into my head. And if I can find those zones that are the highest volume zones, the most likely to react zones, right? Because that's where the most people are. Mm -hmm. Then I have the most confidence taking those trades. Uh, with Boulevard, you know, say if we copy this and we paste it intraday, right? And we go just to today. And I've got my profile on today as well. Like, so let me shut some stuff off here. Let me shut off date. Let me shut off intraday. Let me shut off map and just go to Boulevard and launch Boulevard just from, oops, just from today. Yeah, top three, actually, let's, let's go crazy here. Let's do 20 levels. And we'll actually, we'll go back three days or two days and today. Oh, long weekend. We're gonna go about five days. Trading view is weird. I gotta change the math in that code. There we go. So those are the highest volume levels from Ford from Friday and today, right? You knew out of the gate from Boulevard that everybody that bought this breakout was underwater as soon as we cracked 1760. And it's a short, no, it's a no question short. You know what I mean? Like it's such a, it's such a multi use tool. Uh, the original concept from ADF was the daily closing view up value of the highest volume day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now how do we take that and how can I expound upon that and make that a multifaceted tool to show me where those bag holders are, where that big money is on every time frame, and that's what it does. It goes back specifically in Trading View because we have no ability to go back and say, "Hey, trade, hey, Pine Script, go back and just find me the one highest volume day, and today intraday plot that level." It, it won't do it until the day is closed. In Toss, we can do that. Um, trading View, unfortunately, the way that Pine is uh, Pine is worded. Basically, uh, mm -hmm. we can't show that daily value, that closing daily value, until the day is closed. So what we do in Trading View is go back and find the highest volume bar, and it's just you know if you have a daily if you have a daily chart on your right chart, it's the same exact thing. You know, I mean you're doing the yeah. same thing, but that gives us the ability on Trading View to go back and find super granular levels. Uh, you know, like the 15 minute intraday is amazing it, it i use it all the time on everything um you know if we look at spy here with the 15 minute boulevard on today like just how well it respects those areas as we as we rallied back up into 432 towards the close or towards you know second half of the day instantly rejected you know off that off that higher volume view app that's launching from this uh opening candle of friday so it really is. It's it's such a key level, man. Like um, ever since ever since you guys created it, I I you know just just from observation, I was like, you know, what if I what if this works on a fifteen minute chart? Yeah. And then I was like, okay, cool, man. Look at it. It respected that level. You know, it came right into it and bounced. And like, well, wait a minute. What if what if I throw this on a five minute chart? <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I look at maybe like the last, like you did there, like the last one to three days on a five minute chart. And then I was like, okay, this is getting kind of creepy. Yeah. And I was like, what about a one minute chart? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So I was yeah. like, I threw it on my one minute charts just for the day of, you know, the day I'm trading. And I mean, it blew me away. It was yeah, like, incredible. I mean, yeah, I mean, I understand like, like looking left and like key levels and things like that, but there's some kind of weird confidence that just knowing that the, these VWAP Boulevard levels are your highest volume, like those are the yeah. footprints of the guys who are, whoever they are, you know, like yep. it could be Citadel, it could be some high net worth guy in a small cap. I mean, you know, maybe yeah. it's, it's Ross. I don't know, <laughs> you know, yeah, like, right. Yeah. Whoever, you know, it, but there's their footprints, you know, I think that, like, one, I think that one might be right there. <laughs> exactly. Right. You know, so, uh, yeah, that is exactly, you just hit the nail on the head. It's the footprint of the big money. Yeah. And, and there's nothing else that I found except for one other thing that I coded that has been able to show me that footprint I've taken. So I took Boulevard in its static levels and I want to know, okay, well, everybody thinks of VWAP as a line in the sand. And I hear, I've heard so many people tell me oh, intraday, or intraday VWAP doesn't work. It always, it sells right through all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you got to 
you got to know that people aren't buying just they're not buying that exact penny you know what i mean they're buying in and around that average price to get the best average price throughout the day so with that thought pattern i started you know i said well what if i could go through and i could just build a map that shows me those zones intraday right and doesn't doesn't necessarily give me like a hard line and so i'm trying to load it right here there we go and this is your clouds right so this is this is this is a heat map uh oh, the heat not map. good okay yeah hold on just a sec i just let all that up and then it's like meh well, it's true, you know, like, I mean, so many guys want to like risk to a specific line, you know, and Yeah. Like, you know, it, the, the market doesn't work that way. Like a buddy of mine that trades put it really well one time when he was like, you know, stocks don't always respect key levels. It's, it's kind of like if you've ever lived on a farm, it's like the cow that wants to like push through the fence a little bit and grab the grass yeah. on the other side. You know, and then he comes back in, you know, it's like you got to have a little bit of porosity, a little bit of flexibility with your level. Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah, exactly. I, the, the flexibility and uh, let's find a good one. Uh, and just knowing like kind of those general zones where they're, where they're, uh, you know, situated, it led me to building this map. And I'm trying to find a really good example of it here. Yeah. It's like right here. OCGN right there, 410. Yeah. So OCGN, yeah. what it does today, you know, and this is, it's multi-time frame. So you can start with a day, right? A day, uh, a week, month, right? And it'll show you back, uh, it'll show you what the highest volume zones are, what the map zones are. So we launch a zone from a historical bar that is off the chart and it comes across, we break up and over, hold that right here. And then we extend higher. And this push right here, you know, with volume down at the bottom there, you see that that push comes back, retest, and then pushes up and we launch another zone here mm -hmm. that you end up holding and you come in and you end up, you know, that blow off top style move launches another zone. And so what I'm doing here is basically taking, you know, the view app of uh, the view app of the zone and the bar and then calculating that from the high and creating kind of a, hey, this might be a trouble area, you know what I mean? you might right. want to watch out for that. So it's really similar to Boulevard, but it's a little calmer looking uh, to me, at least as opposed to, oops, you know, 22 lines on your chart. Right. Yeah. And it kind of makes me wait for that good solid trade, right? Where as opposed to, you know, having uh, this, as opposed to having this on where I, you know, I see four or five different lines through here. I'm like, oh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, well, it failed that one. Well, maybe I'll come off this one or I don't, it gets confusing sometimes with all the lines. So, but even that, if you throw like, those back oh. up there, like, because I, I haven't, I haven't used the, the, um, the heat map just yet, but you know, you, you look between S1 there and S3. Yeah. You know, it pretty much encompasses the, I guess the context, the volume context of, of that whole distribution event that's going yeah, on. Yeah, right exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, so whether you're using the heat map or, or whether or not you're using, you, you know, like you like the lines, yeah, like you can, it just, it gives you that insight that, okay, if you're looking left, like here's where, if you're, sh if you're shorting this at the top, there's distribution going into this. And then you apply oh, that right. to like the, the volume and the price action, which you can see like all the wickiness going on up there. Right. And, that yeah. one last little pop at like, uh, you know, like one, it looks like two or three, three thirty or something like that, that failed into that zone. Yeah. You know, and it was, you know, it was over after that. And I think it's yeah. pretty much tanked after hours, but yeah. Uh, actually, yeah, that's why, that's why they look so similar. I don't have, there we go. I don't have extended hours on. Oh my gosh. There we so go. So in the room, Zach trades without extended hours personally uh, himself. So a lot of his students, uh, people that are specifically trading his trade types, holy crap. Um, they trade specifically uh, no pre-market, right? Because they're post yeah. 10.30 a.m. traders. And most of them are large cap traders anyways. Um, 
So there, a lot of them are trading without after hours on. So I, I usually uh, have a screen showing that has, I mean, the title of this workspace is view app room, you know, so yeah. it's usually showing no after hours, but um, yeah, you turn on, you know, after hours and you get a, a whole different context of it. Yeah. They're, they're color coded for different time frames. So this is a weekly zone that's launching inside of a daily zone. Um, okay. It's a monthly zone down here with another daily zone up here. So red is daily, green is weekly, cyan's monthly. So it kind of gives you the time frame and you know uh, what the color coding for Boulevard would. And it's literally, it's, it's Boulevard's logic, but it's going through and finding those highest volume view apps and just plotting a map instead. So it That's makes amazing. me kind of wait for the, the calmer trade. And, you know, like, you know, if we're talking about ABCD type stuff, you know, extension down, push up, higher low holds the weekly zone right there, extension up, target the next zone above, right? Yeah. Take profit into the, the start of the zone. That's a pretty decent little trade right there, you know. Oh, it's an and, amazing trade. And yeah. that's with no context of view app, you know, uh, not even knowing where intraday is. And if we put intraday back on, now we've got, you know, that looks crazy, right? But we've got a whole different context for kind of what to expect. And we can see as we push up into plus two deviations, we know that 95% of rice stays within two standard deviations. Mm -hmm. So we know that we're overextended there is what I'm saying. Price, volume, extension. We know that we're overextended here. If we lose plus one right here, well, trade's probably over because we're reverting back to the mean. Right. And if, if I may there, just to kind of reiterate a point for, you know, maybe some newer traders here that are thinking about risk management um, and, you know, like risk to reward, you know, you, you're talking about taking that trade, you know, right in this area here. And you've got you, you've got this level down here to risk to, right? Yeah. So your risk is just super tight. Yeah. And knowing, like you said, like knowing the, the, the chance that this could push back into your, 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 your VWAP zone up here, your, your, your second standard deviation gives yeah. you, uh, I mean, you could probably figure out the, the RR on that, but it's just fantastic. Yeah. It's so your, your risk. And, you know, if you risk that swing low, maybe a penny below it or something. So you don't get wicked, you know, you're risking, you know, you're risking five, six cents, you right. know, and you're looking to get, you know, you, if you target uh, taking profit into plus one, taking profit into plus two, right. And leaving, you know, a third on uh, for the T2 test in continuation. If you break T2, you're out the trailing stop with a plus one, uh, you know, you're, you're looking for 40 cents on the way up. So that's a pretty decent risk to reward, you know, and, you know, we've got not everybody, depending on what stock, you know, you're not going to risk a full deviation on Tesla, right? So uh, we can go and we can risk a half a deviation. And now we're going up and we're saying, okay, if we get up and over the half right here, we start to come back. Okay, then we're out, you know, or whatever, however you want to run it. Or mm -hmm. we pull back to plus one here, we get up to the half. And we fail right there. So, you know, automatically as it's failing down and puts in the lower high right here, as it, you know, you know that, oh, okay, this thing's probably not going to have the legs to get, to get up and take out high a day. You know what I mean? So, right. yeah, we're looking for, I am looking for the best possible average price around a historical highest volume and or long dated average price and, and Boulevard, you know, let's just take all the million levels. Let's just do three levels, right? Look at where your third highest, your second highest volume BWAP is, is right mm -hmm. here. It wicks right off of it. So you can be almost 100% confident, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, that 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 higher low is probably going to at least get you over VWAP and take out the shorts that just maybe started in right here above, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So. Would, you, would you mind if I share uh, DWAC from- Yeah, go, yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, do you want me to unshare or stop sharing? Yeah, that'll be okay. fine. I'll, I'll grab you right here. How about that? Oh, cool. All right, cool. Sorry, I'm yeah, not super I good mean, with Zoom. I never do Zoom. No, that's cool, man. Um, it was just it kind of what you what you showed right there made me think of something similar on um, DWAC. Let me know. Can you see it? You mm -hmm. see? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, this is kind of like how I like to trade um, with it. <laughs> I, I I need to really start adding those heat maps on here to be honest with you, but. You know, if you, you've got your one minute chart, I've got my five minute chart, and then I kind of toggle between 15 and 30 minutes. Okay. But like if you, if you take that, that, that level, number one, it was kind of coming down into a prior area of, um, 
I think this 8606 goes back to, um, I want to say, yeah, this day over here. So kind of like this big, big sell down day that we had here. Yeah. And came right down into that on a 15 or 30 minute chart and found support. So, right. you know, just thinking like, like you were thinking there, looking at the macro picture a little bit, like zooming out a little bit. I mean, obviously the, the nicer trade would have been to, to catch that fade off the pre-market. Right. Um, but you know, if you're looking for like that ABCD pattern you're talking about, you know, you've got, you've got it forming right here, you know? Right. Yeah. And the nice little higher lows, higher lows, that sort of thing. And, you know, whether you've got your heat maps up there or this, this, um, this is obviously your highest volume, the 8606, and then you've got some resistance levels over here. I haven't been using those deviations, but I need to. Uh, what I like to do is just kind of find your resistance like you were showing there on Tesla. If you just look at those, just look at those uh, S1, S2, and S3 levels. So this was on a one minute chart. Um, the 15 minute chart was down here. So we bounced right. off of that, started putting in your higher lows, gives you those little tight little pullbacks that you can anticipate a push back to, you know, maybe up up and through one of them and, and kind of retest the other one. Who knows? I, this, this may have been, um, you may have found one of your standard deviations up there that it ran to. But um, if you look at it, you know, it's, it's got plenty of, um, plenty of room there from 89 to say 95, you know, a $5 move yeah. and you could have, you, you could have risked awesome. like 50 cents on it, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's the, the R that these give you access to is like something that I never had before. I ever yeah. like, uh, I just didn't, you, you, you have the ability, uh, you have the ability to find the floor and to find where those base buyers are you know what i mean it's just it is that Absolutely. Simple. and it's funny that you say that um you maybe that was one off of one of your deviations and the floor on dwac at you know 1106 a.m on the one minute chart is that that low right there at 11 a.m on your chart on dwac is is coming right off of negative one deviation okay which is that's a reversion trade for us in a counter trend market let's let's see it on yours oh yeah um to get back share screen one there we go okay can you see that yeah okay so this is a reversion trade that we uh that we call a t3 or a t4 a t4 is a cross trade a t3 is a reversion back to vwap and so we get you get that hard sell from vwap down into the negative one and you look for the reversion back to vwap from there okay. right in a counter trend market so a counter trend is just literally a ranging horizontal market right where you do not have an established up or down trend uh so we've got either uh we've got a t3 and a t4 trade that oftentimes uh hold on just a second let me let me find let me find the trade types here that oftentimes lead into each other uh, sorry, looking for something else here. Um, I'm giving you guys the goods right now. People pay for these trades. <laughs> um, oh, I love talking uh, shop, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, I like, dude. I love it. It's literally, it, it's, it's what I. You do know, it's what's day. funny is like I, I trade with like maybe like 20, 20 guys and um, yeah, just, just like a little you know friendly Discord chat. And you know, one of the guys had taken this uh, DWAC trade and. He was in there, nice little perk there, end of day, right around three o'clock. And I was like, just be just be aware, right around 96 is uh key resistance. Yeah. You know? Yep. I mean, it, I was just I was just thinking, like, you know, it's on its way up there and he's mm -hmm. in the trade. And I'm like, hey, 96 is probably gonna be resistance, you know, just yeah, just keep it in mind. For sure. Yeah. So it's just amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, and this is how like it's just a perfect example of how we intertwine both, you know, intraday view app which is wild with pre-market on with DWAC today or from, oh, is that today? Yeah. Uh, you know, and then the negative one deviation band here is what I was just pulling up. It's a reversion trade where we, you know, look to participate off the one and target VWAP as your take profit for the first portion. And then look to see if that works into uh, a type four, which is a cross trade and, a, and an extension through VWAP, you know?
Okay. So it, <clears throat> it it's a perfect example. It does. You you get up there, right? You you hit, you know, your boulevard, your continuous boulevard levels, you pull back a little bit, put in the other higher lows, move up to intraday view app. And you know, that could be a trade in itself, right? And then if depending on where your risk is and if you're working around a core position, maybe you're maybe you start a position down here off the lows and you're going to take profits into the pop and maybe rescale down here on the lows and then take profit into the pops and rescale on the lows. You can play those deviations back and forth to each other. And if you have the half deeds on there as well, you know, you can play, you can play that way, or you could play the reclaim of Boulevard right here for the break, like the cross style trade through VWAP right there that it does, you know, and that's, I mean, that's 90.95 to $96. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a $5 move, you know, a $6 move. So yeah, there's, there's tons of way that you can inter intertwine it, you know, and, and you know, that this launched off of a red candle right there on the one minute, you know that the sellers are going to hit it right there. You know Absolutely. what I mean? It would be different if that was a buy candle. Um, yeah. Kind of context where and how it launches is, is big as well. How did it launch? Did it launch on a slam extension candle down like that? You know what I mean? Like, are you just, are they trying to take everybody out right there? <laughs> you know, and you break lows right. or did it launch on a, a ramp to highs? One of my favorite things to look for are VWAPs, um, I think Spy did it, are boulevards that are launched off of lows. No, I, I don't see it on that. Um, anyways, I'm boulevards. the same way, but so, I yeah. mean, you're taught what you're talking about there is like contextually, like is, exactly, yeah. is it, for those of you who don't know, like, or ha have a good understanding of what these VWAP boulevard levels are. Obviously, the yellow one is the highest volume. the The second highest is going to be the red one, uh, and then down at the bottom there, right around like eighty nine and a half, is going to be the purple one, which is the the third highest volume. So, right. you know, I, what I've begun to do is kind of like what you're talking about there, James, where I, I like to see those kind of like stacked up under me. Mm -hmm. You know, so like you were saying, like if 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 the yellow bar, if the highest volume VWAP Boulevard for the day is well above price, like I'm expecting there to be some resistance up there. Right. Versus like if you were to see that down where the purple line is. Yeah. Whole you know, I might story. think, OK, we're we're getting a lot of support down here. You know, I might have a little bit more confidence. And so like you're saying, contextually speaking, you still have to take into consideration price action and, yeah. you know, the context of the volume. It's not just, oh, buy this and it will go to here and you right know, yeah no 100 percent. yeah it it's i always think i always tell people to think of it as as trapped traders or your base right so it's it's either people that need to get out or it's people that are trying to move it up it's just right. that simple you know what i mean and it's being that it is the highest volume of the look back that you give it you're finding you're telling it what to tell you you know like yeah. if you just want to look at today and launch levels from today, well, you're going to see where your key resistance is and where your key support is. That's, it's just that simple. Um, yeah, on, on big reversals, I, I don't know if Neo did it. Neo's notorious for it um, because Neo, the way, the way the algos fire on this thing for some reason, man, they always, there's a lot of V-shaped reversals in Neo. And a lot of times, well, it's not doing it here, but a lot of times when you sell down in Neo, you'll get those high volume, like that blow off sell to the bottom, that hard snap where you shake everybody out and you'll launch, you'll launch off the bottom. And then as soon as you do, man, as soon as you build that higher low above it, you get that ramp back up. So cool. Well, listen, man, I think, um, I think we've given viewers quite a taste of the, you know, the potential for VWAP Boulevard, the importance of volume and, and honestly, I just want to you know, show my gratitude to you for the work that you've done for the community by providing these indicators, man, because I, I'm telling you, it has transformed my charts. Like I, I would not trade now without my VWAP boulevards. Oh, well, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't want there to be, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Um, and, you know, no, uh, I don't want there to be any misunderstanding. You know what I mean? It was me and Zach and, and Rumpy, the guy from Absolutely. Australia, our other coder, like they're everybody where I brought the idea to Zach and we did toss together and then uh, Rumpy and I did this one. So, you know, it's, we wouldn't have been able to do any of it 
uh, had they not helped me. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So I just always want to show gratitude and respect where it's due. And, and those two guys definitely are a huge reason that we, that we have this tool, you know? Um, Zach is kind enough to like take my wacky ideas and to entertain them for long enough. And some of them he shuts down and he goes, this is, you're just chasing your own tail with this. <laughs> and then some of them, he goes, Hey, this is a really good question. We should follow this, you know, like, That's cool. um, so yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, it. credit, credit where credit's due, man. And we, we do, we appreciate <laughs> Zach all, I mean, Thanks. everybody there, um, yeah. you know, and to that point, why don't you tell viewers if you want to a little bit about, um, you know, how they can find you, you know, if they right. want to learn more about this, it's, it's the VWAP. Yeah. So, uh, you can find me on Twitter at JMF tattoo, right. Uh, I, I'm not super active on there, but I, I'm active enough to, to be, you know, I answer questions or DMS or anything like that that come my way. Uh, but I'm in our room every single day, which is the VWAP.com. Uh, that's our main site, right? Uh, and we have uh, just an open, open forum in the room, really. Uh, I am the moderator, meaning I just chat on mic all day, right? We've got an open mic where I come on pre-market every day. I go through kind of overall market status, what some of the major names are doing, what gappers we've got that day, what are the small cap names moving? And it is not by any means a trade call out service or a trade type room. Uh, we're just there to help each other and talk about VWAP related trading styles, right? And specifically Zach's methodology that he teaches through his education, uh, which can be found on the VWAP.com as well. So I'm there every day, usually all day in our discord. And yeah, you can find me there. Good stuff, man. Well, listen, thanks so much for taking the time with us. Uh, sharing yeah, all this. Too, really appreciate it, man. Thank Good you very much, you. buddy. I appreciate it. All awesome. right, buddy. All right, bye. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy our content, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to like our videos. Also, check out tradingsim.com forward slash blog for more content.